This is the story of Air Tahoma Flight 185. Flight 185 was a cargo plane carrying packages for DHL from Memphis, Tennessee to Cincinnati Northern Kentucky International Airport. On the 13th of August 2004, they were flying a Convair 580. The Convair 580 was an airplane from the 1950s and I was genuinely surprised to find out that Convair 580s were still in service at least till 2019 with Air Chatham in New Zealand. On today's flight, they were making a round trip between Memphis and Northern Kentucky International Airport. The co-pilot was the pilot flying and the captain was the pilot monitoring. They departed Memphis at about 11.29 p.m. The climb and cruise portions of the flight were uneventful. We joined the crew at 17 minutes past midnight. The crew talk. The captain says that he's going to balance out the fuel as he adjusts the plane's fuel systems. They talk about the weight and balance of the plane. It's 12.30 a.m. and the co-pilot says, weird. The captain is busy with the weight and balance paperwork and doesn't respond. At 12.38 a.m., the co-pilot says, something's messed up with this thing. The co-pilot was referring to the plane's control wheel. He adds, feels like I need a lot of force. It is pushing to the right for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know what's going on. The captain does not respond. At 12.43 a.m., they were getting close to Cincinnati Northern Kentucky International Airport. They were at 4,000 feet and the captain's on the radio with approach control. He says that they had the runway in sight. The controller cleared flight 185 for a visual approach onto runway 36 right. The controller added, keep your speed up, the captain acknowledged. The co-pilot says, what in the world is going on with this plane? Sucker is acting so funny. The captain reassures the first officer, saying that they do a full control check once on the ground. The approach controller then handed them off to the tower controller. The captain asked for their landing clearance from the tower controller, and then they are cleared in for runway 36 right. As the plane passed through 3,200 feet, the speed of the plane began to fall. The first officer sounds the alarm again. I'm telling you, what is wrong with this plane? It is really funny. I got something all messed up here. The captain says that they have an imbalance as he left the crossfeed open. The pilot says, we're going to flame out. The captain asks the co-pilot to keep the power on. At 12.46 a.m., the co-pilot says, we're losing power. Both engines had flamed out. The plane began descending at about 900 feet per minute. The captain contacts ATC to let them know that they're having issues. The controller asks if they needed emergency equipment at the runway. The captain responds with, nope, no one ever heard from Air Tahoma Flight 185 ever again. Flight 185 had crashed 1.2 miles short of runway 36 right. The co-pilot was killed in the crash, but the captain survived. If you're a pilot or if you're familiar with aviation in general, you probably have a rough idea as to what happened. Let's take a closer look to see what actually happened. The investigators looked at the plane. The plane was built in 1953 and had undergone several overhauls. With such an old plane, they had to look at mechanical issues. But their search turned up nothing. The plane was airworthy. The wreckage showed no signs of structural failure and they had worked out that the cargo had not shifted during their landing attempt. The weather was not a factor. The plane had more than enough fuel to make it, and then some. The investigators looked at the crew next. Regulations require crews to leave a load and balance sheet at their departure airport, but with Flight 185, that was not to be found. They found the missing sheet in the wreck. They found two copies of the load and balance sheet at the crash site, one signed and one unsigned, one meant for them and one meant for the departure airport. But they spot something odd. The fuel burn moment values on both the sheets are different. The value on the signed sheet is 1.667 and the value on the unsigned sheet is 1.067. This means as far as the unsigned sheet is concerned, the plane was not within limits and should not be allowed to fly. Listening to the CVR, they realized that the captain was working on the load and balance sheet in the air. He just couldn't get the numbers to come out correctly. He was using the wrong value and so the captain was under a lot of stress in the air. Instead of monitoring the instruments, he was busy with the load and balance sheet. This gives us an idea about the situation in the cockpit as they made their way towards their destination. 
at 12.17 a.m. The captain said that he was going to balance the fuel, which the first officer acknowledged. As the fuel crossfeed continued, the captain pushed ahead with the weight and load calculations with the wrong fuel burn moment value. At 12.38 a.m., the co-pilot starts to complain about the handling of the aircraft and the first officer had to apply a lot of force to control the plane. He got no response from the captain. The captain at this stage should have taken control of the plane or at least tried to diagnose the issue. Instead, he tells the co-pilot that they do a full control check on the ground. As the plane flies through 3200 feet, the captain starts the in-range checklist which includes steps like looking at the fuel shutoff valves and the crossfeed valve positions. According to Air Tahoma, this should have been done before they left 12,000 feet as doing the checklist earlier on in the flight would lighten the load for the pilot so close to the landing. But now, the co-pilot was trying to control the plane and the captain was busy with the checklist that he should have completed a long time ago. While performing the in-range checklist, the captain says, imbalance on this crossfeed, I left it open. This is a good time to talk about the crossfeed system on a Convair 580 and crossfeeds in general. A crossfeed system is designed to allow fuel from one side of the airplane to flow to another. Let's say you're flying an airplane and you have a situation where you have more fuel in the left hand tanks than you do in the right hand tanks. In this situation, you can use the crossfeed to transfer fuel from the left hand tanks to the right hand tanks to prevent a fuel imbalance. The Convair 580 has a crossfeed system. It consists of two fuel tanks and a shutoff valve for each tank. The shutoff valves were designed to isolate a particular fuel tank from the rest of the system if needed. After that, you had the boost pumps which pumped the fuel to the engines or to the crossfeed valves and then you had two crossfeed valves on each side of the plane. Both these valves had to be open for fuel to flow from one side to another. Air Tahoma strictly prohibits the fuel transfer from one tank to another on the ground or in the air and it also states that if you do use the crossfeed system, you had to use the fuel shutoff valve for the tank that you were not using. The overhead fuel panel had a card that said the exact same thing. However, the captain said that he knew about needing to keep one of the shutoff valves closed but he did not do so because he thought that the valves might fail and stay shut if he closed it. Most pilots had a misconception that the fuel shutoff valves might fail if they closed it. So now you had both fuel shutoff valves open. This is where the second factor comes into play. On the Convair 580, you could operate the boost pump at different pressures to extend the life of the boost pump. Usually, both boost pumps are set to the same pressure. On the accident airplane, the left boost pump had been replaced with a new one. The new boost pump had a pressure of 21 psi. No one bothered to check the pressure of the right boost pump, but had they checked it, they would have found it to be 15 psi. So with the fuel shutoff valve open, the pressure difference would have forced fuel from the left tank into the right tank. But on the night of the accident, it's possible that the right boost pump had been turned off for the crossfeed. With the fuel shutoff valves open, the crossfeed valves open, and with this difference in pressure, most of the fuel in the left tank was transferred over to the right tank. This is why the co-pilot was having so much trouble controlling the aircraft. A quick scan of the instruments would have found this issue. Also, had they done their in-range checklist at 12,000 feet, they would have found this issue. They had multiple opportunities to identify the problem that was slowly developing. The first officer sounded the alarm multiple times, but the captain never acted on his concern. Once the fuel in the left tank ran dry, the boost pump began pumping air into the crossfeed system. This reduced the fuel pressure on the left and right engine driven fuel pump inlets. The right tank was full of fuel and had the captain turned on the right boost pump, it could have provided enough fuel pressure to the right engine to keep it alive. But alas, he did not. With that, he sealed the fate of Air Tahoma Flight 185. They were too close to the ground to attempt a restart of their engines, and Flight 185 slammed into the ground due to fuel starvation with plenty of fuel on board. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It'll really help the channel grow. 
A big thank you to my lost airplane fan for letting me use his amazing footage on my videos. I'll catch you guys next time. Stay safe, wash your hands.